There's a little known writing of the elite that I covered many years ago, which is really relevant now. A lot of people have forgotten this book, but I want to call attention to it because it's written by Charles Galton Darwin, and he's one of the inner circle of characters comes out of the families of the Royal Society and the elite that actually from the Galton Wedgwood uh, Darwin families, as in Charles Darwin himself. And the book written in 1952 gives a kind of a idea of where the elite want to see the future going in the next million years, literally a million years. So they think, but it's very revelatory because it's not a science fiction work. This is a work dealing with actual plans and strategies for how they want to control the future. And the book begins by saying that the religion of the future, the modus operandi is scientism or pragmatism. So there's no transcendent truth. There's no transcendent laws, ethics, etc. Everything is in evolutionary flux. And now everything is basically determined by molecular dynamics and causal chains or deterministic materialism. From this standpoint, the future has to be regulated and controlled. And that includes everything that man does in terms of his economic activity. So all matter and energy movements and flows must be controlled. And since man himself is part of that dynamic, he must be limited and controlled. The laws of history, he says, are actually just biological determinism and the mastery of those chemical processes. He talks about how man is a machine and basically it's a meat sack. And the laws of thermodynamics are, are thus what determine human biology and human civilization. And to master those things, energy control, energy mastery, mastery resources and, and resource control, and even at times faking the idea of resource crisis, engineered resource crisis, very relevant to what we're talking about nowadays, especially with Klaus, they will penetrate the covenants and penetrate all of the back doors in the technology. They will penetrate the covenants and the back doors all at once. Why? Food is key, he says. Food is key because Malthus taught us that resources are limited and thus humans must be limited because of the limited resources. So this economic theory in this entire chapter chapter from Galton it, uh, applies Malthusianism to his telos, to his end goal purpose of all reality. And so in other words, because nature kills the scientific priest class must step in and steer evolution and basically can basically depop if you catch my, my drift, right? Cities and industrialization have given the uh, idea that the appearance that there's more of a battle for resources than there actually are. And that's why they actually love cities and, and packing people into cities because it gives the impression that there's too many people. The cities are really just older, ancient forms of social engineering. And that's, that's actually a scientific process that he talks about. And he says the religion of the future will be actually science. He mentions the models of the stages or phases of industrial revolutions. And he says that just like Klaus's book, Fourth Industrial Revolution, right, that the next in, uh, revolution, the next industrial revolution will be the final revolution that Huxley talked about, which is the revolution against man himself. That is to inaugurate the transhuman age, which is the result of the advancement of technology and a series of actually staged and fake crises. And this even includes toxifying the environment such that there will be super soldiers, mutations, and mass radiation ex and exposure to toxins, which leads to the intended stressors on the species. So basically to intentionally put environmental stresses to, to promote supposedly the survival of the fittest. That's the attitude. That's, that's all their modus operandi, you see. And then it goes into how weather control is not only necessary, but will be instrumental to the future and how it will give the impression that man is actually hurting and harming the environment when in reality it's the elite themselves and their genetic modification and their experimentation that is harming the environment, right? The big companies, in fact, that's actually what he says. He says this will really be a, a cloak. It'll be a great excuse via all of this toxic environment to give the impression that it was man himself that is the problem. He says we'll use game theory and we'll use all these different scientific techniques so that the elite will maneuver themselves into a position of having ultimate and total control in this technocracy and only they will have children. So nobody will have offspring. Only the elite will be able to have offspring. He says that in fact the 
the promotion of the welfare society was intentional to wreck the existing economy and show, hey, look, uh oh, it's the fault of capitalism. It's the fault of the welfare system. And so all of that has to go away because there's not enough resources. And thus you get the justifications, which we're seeing now for youth uh, in ASIA. He says that this is ultimately just a mutation of the species, in their view, towards a kind of omega point where there's no longer a need for the competition for resources because the elite themselves are all that's left and everyone else is gone. They will do this, he says, through stabbies, experimentation through stabbies, which I covered many times with you guys through what Jonas Salk talks about in his books. He says they will create a new religion for the, per- for the future too, which will be a cover for basically scientism. And putting people into poverty, he says, is actually a form of dysgenics. He says it's a great way to ensure that people go away is to make them destitute. And he talks about different regimes, uh, Eurasian regimes that had communism exported to them as a process of or experiment in dysgenics. He says there will no longer be traditional families. There will only, the only thing that will matter is the fittest and the wealthiest and the most elite. And this will all be engineered and steered via a fake religion with a new creed controlled by the elite. The elite themselves, he says, won't be bound by any of these laws. They will be above these laws. He says they will be the wild men not submitting to or not tamed by the emasculation that the rest of the global society is under. He says this will become a, a utopia, and it'll be, like a, it'll be like Utopia Island, he says. And the elites, he says, will never be tamed, and that's absolutely necessary because they will be called the world controllers just directly out of Brave New World, right? directly out of the dysgenics model society. And the elites will then determine, like in the movie Gattaca, who can and can't marry, who will and will, will not have offspring. He says this will uh, be like... <laughs> <clears throat> he says this will be like studies that we see with bees and ants. The way ants and their colonies work will be the exact same for the elites. And the elites will be the offspring of their own races, he says. So something like Hugo Drax, literally what James Bond fought against in Moonraker, right? This is uh, uh, in the novels, and, and Ian Fleming was basing this on reality. If you go read the stories in his life as a high-level British psyops guy, he says that many, much of the, of the population who will be the workforce will be sterilized, forcibly sterilized. And he says that people like Hugo Drax will decide who can have babies and basically they will have a harem. Now, I mean, things are getting really crazy, so it's almost like that won't even be possible now. But the weirdest part of this book was the secret royal bloodlines chapter. Not joking. He says that the elites have always, throughout millennia, breeded people for certain jobs and these royal elites who practice I-N-C-E-S-T, were uh, able to sort of breed people into being a, a psychopathic ruling class. And the psychopathic ruling class is who he thinks, right, is the, no- the noble caste that will take us into the future because they are not bound by any morals or any constraints. And they're willing to do the scientism, the science that's necessary to get us to the Star Trek worldview. He says, ultimately, the uh, experimentation through the stabbies, experimentation through uh, GMOs and mutations will create a master breed. (laughs) He literally says that. And uh, so if you want more about this uh, fascinating book, you can go watch my lectures. I've done a lecture on the entirety of this book, as well as about 50 or 60 other writings of the elite. And I want to remind you, too, that if you're looking to desoy and detoxify from the technocrats who have intentionally toxified you and me and all of us for decades, right? the whole of MKUltra is really a way to toxify the mind. And the big bio people are up there right, trying to toxify our body and our environment as well. And that's all on purpose. I would recommend going to chalk.com. Use the promo code J50 and you get 50% off of these amazing supplement products. I've been using them for months. I love them, uh, especially something like the Tonkat Ali 100, which is shown to boost testosterone. Ho- head on over to chalk.com, use JAY50, and you get 50% off. That's our show sponsor. They're an awesome Bayes company. 
and be sure and subscribe over my website. Like and share this video if you would and tell other people about the next million years, the Eloy and the Morlock, exactly what is in H.G. Wells' books. H.G. Wells writing in the 20s and the 30s, Charles Galton Darwin writing in the 50s. Fast forward all the way up to now with Jacques Attali, with Klaus Schwab, they're all saying the same thing, proving that it's a continuity of agenda that we, we right now are living through.